Yeah, mate. Welcome aboard. Hey kids, thanks for tuning in to another Aussie episode. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that way you won't miss out on any of the new videos we put out and it would certainly make my day. In the meantime, enjoy this video. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Today we've come along to the Toll Rescue Ambulance Helicopter Service. It's a bit of a mouthful, but can you think of anything better than an ambulance and a helicopter combined? Well, we're gonna go along and meet some of the people that work in these teams to keep people safe and rescue them from tricky situations they might've got themselves in. And we're gonna check out one of these amazing helicopters. So come with me kids, let's see who we can find. Let's see who we can find, kids. This is so exciting. Oh, beware. Let's see who's behind here. Oh, wow. Check this place out. G'day, mate. G'day, mate. I'm, I'm Ben. Oz nice to meet you, Ben. How I'm you, Ozzy. Mate? I'm hey, really, Ozzy. really well. Thanks for coming out. Mate, thanks for having us here. So you're the first person I've found since I've been here. Oh, really? Why don't you tell us what you do for a job? So, mate, my name's Ben. I'm one of the critical care paramedics here for New South Wales Ambulance that works on the helicopter. That sounds like a very important role. Mate, it's fun. So what is a critical care paramedic? What does that do? So, mate, I'm based here out of Bankstown Airport. Okay. And we work on the helicopter and we respond to sick and injured people all over New South Wales. Right. And, uh, yeah, that's what we do. Amazing. So you go and rescue people, you help keep them alive, get them back to safety, and then... Uh, Yep. Get them going again. Absolutely. So we go and get people out in the mountains, in the water, right, uh, in little hospitals as well. And okay. we help the little hospitals out and we bring them back to Sydney and hopefully make them better. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All right, so I see that you're looking at some equipment here. Yeah, mate, Can I'm, you just run grabbing me through my, yeah I'm just grabbing my gear now to uh, head out just before we head out to the helicopter. Okay. So most gear that we wear on every mission. So, mate, I've got my safety harness which we need to wear all the time, right. so I don't fall out of the helicopter. All right. Very important. Safety first, kids, as Abs always. Absolutely. So it'll take just a couple of seconds to pop on. Okay, so you pop that on. Once that's all tightened up, you can attach that to the helicopter. Yeah, right. So if the doors are open, you're not going to fall out. Yeah, essentially, yeah. I'll show you what we hook up to in the helicopter. Great. Yeah, we stay nice and safe inside the helicopter. Excellent. This is my life jacket that we take everywhere Hang on, as that's, well. That's a life jacket? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'll show you some stuff that's on it that's it pretty cool. It doesn't look like a normal life jacket that you see on a boat, so 
how does that actually work? So hidden in this section yeah. is, a, is a compressed life jacket. If we right. pull these little red tabs right here, okay. it will inflate like a normal one. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, you've got, got a lot our... of other stuff on there. Yeah, yeah. This is another big important piece of equipment, our portable radio. Of course. Yeah. Kids, I'm sure, would love portable radios. Absolutely. So that's the way you communicate with the other people in your team? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, guys in the helicopter, guys on the ground. Okay. And our control center okay. as well. All right. Yeah. And then this little thing is our, what we call spare air. Spare air. Yeah. So it's a little bottle of oxygen. Okay. Unfortunately, if we end up in the water yeah. in our helicopter, we can pull right. this out and we can breathe underwater. You can breathe underwater like a yeah. fish. Like a fish. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So what else? You've got lots of other pockets there. Of course. Cool. So yeah, we've got other, some other like uh, life-saving stuff. So in this side, we've got our uh, emergency beacon. Okay. So if we get stuck somewhere and they need to find us, we can activate this. Right. And we'll get some more help. You pull that out and it, what, shoots up into the air? Yeah, so a little aerial pops out. Right. And it sends a beacon up into the sky right. and satellites pick it up and okay. they'll come and get it. And so they know exactly where you are yep. and they can send out another helicopter or something else to come and find it. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. What else have we got? We've got our bright strobe. So super light. bright strobe torch. Light. Yeah, super bright torch for activities at night. I'll turn that on. So it doesn't look like much here, but at night, the it's guys can really see this bright. from miles away. Wow, okay. Yeah. So you don't just do this job in the daytime, you do it at night as well. Yeah, yeah, all hours of the day, all weather. If we can get there, yeah, we'll go there. Amazing. Now I can't turn this off. Sounds like a pretty cool job to me. It's a lot of fun. Um, anything else you got there, Yeah, I've got some other stuff. I'll pull it out. We've got that there. So we've got flares or fireworks. Fireworks. As well. So you can have a party while yeah. you're working. Yeah. Oh, they're for safety, of we course. We can. Safety. So yeah, if again, if we're somewhere in the bush and the guys can't see us, right. we'll uh, shoot these up into the sky. Okay. And they can see us nice and easy. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got some super basic uh, little safety gear. So this is just a safety blanket, uh, uh, like thermal blanket. one of those blanket. silver blankets yeah. you wear. Yeah, right. yeah. Right, okay. Uh, and then we've got a whistle. A whistle, of yeah. course. Basic stuff, but really helps. And then we also have a little signal mirror. Okay. So we can reflect the sun. Right. The helicopter, and they can come and get us as well. Amazing. So we've got heaps of different ways that we can um, get, like, make contact with the helicopter so they can come back and get us. Amazing. So yeah. the helicopter can sometimes drop you off. You do your rescue, you stay with the, someone that's been injured, and then the helicopter can fly away or whatever, yeah. and then they can come back and they can find you using all of these devices. Yeah. yeah Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So we carry a lot of stuff in a little jacket. You certainly do. And yeah. is it heavy? It is. It so is. It has to be pretty strong. I'd like to think so. <laughs> Very good. Now, I see over here, there's a helmet. There is. Very important piece of equipment, I'd imagine. Mate, our, one of our most important pieces. I'll just pop all this back in. Uh, yeah, so we've got our flight helmet. Uh, so, that. so, it's pretty cool. It's got, it's just like your normal bike helmet, I guess, but yeah, a little right. bit more high tech. Ooh, that's it's got an option to plug into our radio. Uh, it's got some built-in sunglasses. Oh, nice. And a nice clear visor as well. Okay. That's just so we don't get dust and stuff in our Fair eyes. Fair enough, yeah. Um, yeah, so we put that on. Uh, and it also got this long cord that plugs into our radio, so we can so you can hear, through hear the that. radio through that. Right, cool. excellent. That's I'll chuck really that on. Cool. Yeah, please. Um, also, I'll grab uh, our wet my wetsuit. So okay. This comes with us on every mission. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, we do rescue people in the water as well. Of course. Yeah. So when we do that, we can't do that in our clothes. Yep. So we jump in our wetsuit. Well, you want to stay warm. Absolutely. You want to keep yourself safe. Yep so that you can keep the other people safe and rescue them, right? Yeah, all yeah, right. yeah, so nice Beautiful. and warm. It's nice and bright. Uh, and we've got all the stuff that you'd probably use in your swimming pool at home. So we've got uh, or snorkeling, mask and snorkel and helmet. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. There we go. It's a bit weird wearing a stack hat in the water. Yeah, it would but be. But it helps. Nice bright wetsuit. Oh, nice. I like that. Just in case. And then some serious flippers. Oh yeah, well, they're good. If we're going to go for a real swim. <laughs> yeah, that, they're pretty advanced, those ones. <laughs> Very high tech looking. Yeah. Amazing. And so, you got to, hang on a sec. Check this out, kids. Oh. <laughs> See that? Yeah. A pair of volleys. Just like Aussie. Hey, the best shoes, only the best. They are the for best. For the best, to do the best job. So we use them in canyons. All right. Yeah, super grippy. Super grippy. Yeah. That's why I wear them too. Good set of Dunlop volleys. Go and rescue people in canyons too. Yeah, mate. You won't fall over here. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to pop that back in there cool. for you. Now, right as on. I look around the room here, I notice, I couldn't help but notice over here, there's a, a blood esky. Yeah. What yeah, is yeah. a blood esky for so, the kids at home? Not having drinks in it, not having your juice and water in it. This no. is an esky for blood. Okay. So obviously we all know we all have blood in our bodies. We do. And some times when people get injured or sick, 
they, we need to replace it. Right. So we have the option of carrying blood and giving it back to people. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So you really do play an important role. We now, like another important piece of equipment, you've mentioned it a few times, is a helicopter. Yeah, the best part. Can we check it out? Absolutely. Let's go, Shall kids. we go? Let's go. Check it out. Wow, Ben. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. So why don't you tell me a few of the important pieces of equipment that make your job possible? Yeah, cool, will do. So this is, uh, first and foremost, this is my seat. This is the paramedic seat. Okay. Where I sit all the time. And that's our doctor's seat. And we've right. got a doctor on board. Right. And uh, the pilot and the crewman sit up the front. And that's where all the big buttons are and all the all the uh, fancy controls are. Okay. But essentially, if my equipment is all in the back. Right. So, first and foremost. In the boot? In this section right oh, here. Oh, just here. Yeah, yeah. First and foremost, as we, while we're a harness, we always want to stay safe. Okay. So this is what we call a wander lead. So I hook onto this. A wander lead. There so you I go. So it can stay in the helicopter. So that's attached to the roof and then attached to your harness. Yep. So, so if, you were, if you were to stand up and fall, you're not going to fall right out. No. So we can operate with the doors open and not fall out. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Pretty very, cool. very cool. So that's the that's a first and foremost some of the things that we do once we jump in the helicopter. Amazing. What are you kneeling on here? Is that mate, a, looks like a bed for you to have a sleep, yeah? Mate, I wish. No, that's our stretcher. It's your stretcher. So that's where the patient will go. Right. And uh, where we can obviously look after them. Yep. And we can connect our monitoring to them and yeah, just make sure they're okay for the trip. Okay, excellent. And can you take that out of the Mate, it does come out, it does come out. Yep. Um, and it also spins around into a different position. Wow. And we can take two of them as well, if we've got two people Amazing. that need to move. Amazing, absolutely. So can you winch, is that one that you can winch down? I've no. seen rescues where you can winch people down and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, this one, no. That one but, stays in here? Yeah, this one stays in here, all but right. up the back of the helicopter. We have can all I... our rescue gear. Excuse me, Ben, is it okay if I jump aboard? Yeah, mate, yeah, absolutely. Get in, mate. Oh. I'm just, sit, I'm just gonna sit in your chair. Yeah, mate, welcome aboard. Oh, thanks, mate. So, I'll start with how we get people out of the water. Ooh, so okay. this is our nice bright yellow rescue strop. So if wow. someone is stuck out in the surf, okay. in a rip, um, and we need to go and get them, we use this. We'll okay. go down dressed in our wetsuit, pop this over their head, and then bring them up safely into the helicopter. Okay, Yeah. just hang off the side of the helicopter. Yeah, we go out that door right there. Amazing. And off we go. That is very, very cool. And so how does that, can I put that on? Yeah, mate, I'll pop it on you if you like. So pop your arms up as well, and it comes up and under your arms like that. All right. And you're connected to me, and right. we're connected to the winch. And that just picks me up. Yeah, and you'll land right here. Pulls me up, and then you lay me on here. Yep. And you do whatever you need to do to, to make sure I'm safe and, and yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what's this called? A strop. A strop. Right, and where does it? Where do you attach to when you jump out of the helicopter? So, mate, I normally have another little piece of equipment here on yeah. my harness and it connects directly to the winch hook, which is just Oh, there. that's what that is. Yeah. So that's the winch hook. Yeah. Wow. And the remote control for that lives just behind the seat. So the crewman will drive it with his thumb up and down. Amazing. Yeah, pretty All cool. All right. So you mentioned, uh, four, I think you said, is there four different people on the on Yeah, board? mate. Yeah, so myself, paramedic, doctor, we've got our air crewman, and we've got our pilot in the front right. Wow, four people to, to yeah. make this operation work. Yeah. Amazing. Now you're going through a quick. Yeah, what mate, else can sorry, we see? Keep going. So then we've got our. Uh, we'll bring this out. This is our special winch stretcher, which will come out and will go on the bed. I'll just move the strop. Thanks, buddy. So this is our winch stretcher. It doesn't look like much in this bag. No. But it's not a, yet. It's a bed that's in half essentially. Right. Yeah. So we'll go down out the door on the winch and we'll find the patient and we need to bring them back up in a stretcher. So you carry it down like that? Yep. And you assemble it when you're down there? Yeah. Right. It comes together like, uh, yeah, you just join it together and it becomes a full stretcher and we can put people in it and then we can winch them up. Amazing. Yeah. So you mentioned a few places. Now we've got water. This is yep. the, the device that you use to winch people or to carry, pull people up out of the water. Yep. This one, where would you use this one? So this is for anyone that needs to be laying down. Okay. Overland, in the bush, Blue Mountains. Right. Yeah. So you can fly from here at Bankstown all the way up to the Blue Mountains, which is a couple of hours drive away. Yeah, yeah. You can fly up there in the helicopter and it, it might be if someone's fallen off a cliff or something, yeah. had an accident while they're bushwalking or whatever. Yep. And then you can jump, or you can be lowered out of the, yep. the helicopter, take this with you, give them some first aid, some, some medical attention. Yep. Pop them on this, 
pull them back out? Straight up. You then take them to hospital? Yeah, or? so then we want to go, we normally just go straight to hospital. So yeah, we try and minimize as much time out of the hospital as we can. Right. We want to get into the hospital as quick as we can. Okay. Now, you said that you fly at night. Yeah. Can you do rescues at night and it's safe enough to winch them up? Or sometimes do you have to stay there with them overnight? So we do sometimes, obviously it is safe enough to operate at night, but sometimes we might choose to stay the night with the patient. Right. Which is really cool. Um, we obviously want to provide good care for them. So we'll start a fire, we'll build a shelter. Right. If they can, we might even give them something to eat or drink and then we'll stay with them till the morning or till when it's safer, and then we'll the helicopter will come back and take us out in the morning. Right, so the helicopter will go home for the night, Yeah. maybe go and do another rescue. Yeah. As long as you guys are safe, and then yeah. it will come back and get you in the morning. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so we use our radio, we'll chat to them, make sure that everyone knows what's going on, and they'll come back and get us. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Now, what are some other, other places that you might rescue people? So f even from here, we even go down to the snowy mountains. Okay. Yeah, so we operate in the snow environment, right. which is pretty cool. Um, we go offshore, water, we go onto big container ships, oil tankers, wow. cruise ships. Uh, yeah, we go anywhere and everywhere. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, Ben, uh, what does it take to become a critical care paramedic? So, I was started off as a normal paramedic in the ambulance service, working on the road. On the road? Yeah. Yeah, in an and ambulance, I, on the car. In, in an car. ambulance, yeah. yeah. And I was on the road for about nine years. Wow. And then, uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to, um, it's obviously very competitive. Right. But I was lucky enough to get a job here. Amazing. And I've been here now for nine years. Wow. Yeah. And you probably don't see yourself ever leaving, right? It's a pretty dream job, right? It's pretty cool. Oh, I it's very it cool. would be. All right, is there any other equipment you Mate, want to show Mate, we us? do, look, why not? We'll show you some. Why not? We'll show you some of our medical equipment. So everything that we carry can go on our winch. So we carry some medical packs. Right. And these hook on to our winch right, with okay. our equipment straps. Yes. Yeah, so we carry two big medical packs that um, have all our medical equipment in. All right. And then, yeah, so we can carry all of this on the winch with us. So Amazing. these two packs, this big thing, so super heavy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we can we can help a lot of people with what's in these bags. That's amazing. You can keep them alive and, and then get them to, to hospital. Yeah. Amazing. All right, Ben, you've showed me a lot of the equipment. Talk me through different parts of your job. Am, am I ready to fly? Do I just sit in here and um, go and rescue someone? Or? Mate, we wish, we wish, but no, mate, we need a seatbelt. So oh, I'm secured to the roof, but you need a seatbelt. Safety Fun. first. Well, so how does a seatbelt work well, in a helicopter? A little bit different to the car. So you grab the other side as well. Yeah. So yeah, so a little bit different. This one's gonna come across your lap yep. and over your shoulders as well. So yeah, mate, pop that in there. All right. And then you're nice and tight down either side. Pull those tabs nice and tight. That's it. If you, there we there go. We go. Beautiful. All right, now I've got it. And then, mate, some shoulder straps for yeah, you. Yeah, right. And make sure you're nice and safe and you don't go anywhere. Well, we don't want to be falling out of the helicopter, and that's clip, for sure. No, mate, not at all. And they clip into the top, and then you tighten them up like so on that side. Yeah, that's right. side there, bud. Perfect. Right. And now you're safe and sound and you're not going anywhere. Great. All right, and I feel very safe. Cool. And I'm ready to fly. So do you fly the plane as well? Mate, I wish. I don't. I don't fly the plane. You've got I'll... enough to do, right? Yeah, we're busy enough in the back. Fair enough. But we've got our pilot, our All pilot right. Tim, flies, okay. the, flies the plane for us. Well, maybe I should unharness myself, unstrap myself from the seatbelt. Seat I'll just press that. Or... So, mate, you twist it? Twist it. Yeah. Oh, that's a cool seatbelt. There you go. All right. Thanks very much for your time, Ben. Mate, nice to meet you. It's been a pleasure to meet you too. I'm going to no, go and find a pilot and see if he can tell us what he does for his job. Cool, mate. Thanks, Ben. See you later. Stay keen. <laughs> All right, kids, let's go and see if we can find a pilot. G'day. Hey, how you doing? I'm, I'm well. Do you know where I can find a pilot? I do. I Are you do a pilot? You're I a pilot. I'm Ozzy. Hello, Ozzy. I'm Tim. Nice, nice to, to meet you, Tim. 
Now, we're here to find out all about what you guys do. Can you tell me about your job as a pilot? Of course. You get to fly this? I do. Can we go and check it out? Let's you can go tell me what, what happens. Absolutely, so my job is to fly the helicopter to the scene of an accident or to a hospital uh, so we can pick someone up and take them to a better place. Amazing, all right. So this would be your seat up here, I imagine. That's where I sit, all right, front right hand side. Front right hand side, and who sits on the other side? The other side uh, is generally our rescue officer who sits on the left hand side. Okay. And he helps me in the cockpit when we're flying to an accident or okay. something like that. And when we get somewhere where maybe we need to do a winch and pull someone out of a canyon or off some rocks, he jumps in the back and he operates the winch. Oh, that's the winch that we learned about with Ben before. That's right. All right, now for today, yep. am I able to take a seat on the other side? Go ahead, yes. go around and jump in. Okay, oh. shall we turn it on? Can we? Let's do it. <laughs> right, here we go. Wow, there is a lot of buttons. There so are. do you know what every single button does? I pretty much do, yeah, it's part of our training. We have to know how to operate all of the equipment down here. We have to understand everything on the top of the console as well. Wow. And importantly, once the powers come up, you have to understand how to interpret all the information that's coming through on the screens in front of you. Amazing, there, there is a lot of information, and I imagine that's a lot of training for you to understand all that. How long have you been flying for? Um, so I started flying when I was 16. Wow. I'm 48, so over 30 years. Wow. And what's your favorite thing about flying? Um, I don't really know where to start. Helping people right. with a helicopter like this, there's no better feeling. Amazing. Excellent, now can you tell me th um, what are some of the main controls that you need to know to fly? What, what's this thing here? Okay, so some of the basics then. So the control in the middle is called uh, the sight click. Sight click? And that basically helps us control which direction the helicopter's pointing in. Okay. So if I push forward on the sight click, the nose of the helicopter drops. Right. If I pull back, the nose comes up. If I want to turn left, I push left, and the aircraft banks to the left. Okay. So that's the sight click. Now, it works in a very similar way to an aeroplane when we're flying around, uh, cruising around at height. But when we're hovering, it's totally unique, and it helps us move around above the ground um, in a unique way that's well, it's unique to a helicopter. Absolutely amazing. Now being uh, so mobile and unique like that, does that mean you can pretty much land anywhere? We can land anywhere as long as there's enough space for us to land. So right. we need a big enough gap in the trees so that our blades don't hit any well, don't, trees or branches. You don't want to be hitting any trees or branches with your blades. Absolutely. So what have we got down here? We've okay, got some so pedals. These are called the uh, your pedals. Okay. And so what they allow me to do, particularly when I'm hovering, is they allow me to twist the aircraft left and right. Wow. So when I'm hovering, if I, I control the direction of movement with the cyclic, then I use the pedals to twist the aircraft and control which direction I'm pointing it. Right. Now, I've got my feet on the pedals and I noticed that when you press them, my pedals move. That's right, so the, the pedals are joint and the cyclics are joint as well. Wow. And the other control, the collective, is also joint. Okay. And that's designed so that, it's really intended so that only one person will fly at any given time. Right, okay. So you're gonna fly and I'll just sit back and take in the scenery. That's right. Fantastic. Well, now, you help me, if you were sitting there for real, you'd be helping me with the navigation system, the radios, and managing the cockpit. Because so, as you've seen, it's so complicated and so busy, it's really helpful to have someone up here helping me. It certainly is very complicated, very busy. But no doubt, you know how to keep us safe and you know how to go and drive this thing or fly this thing to go and rescue other people and keep them safe. That's right. Now, speaking of safety, I see some helmets up here. That's right. I suppose you've got to wear those. So we wear helmets for all of our flights and uh, they also have the communication system inside them. They have a light on them. So if we want to illuminate a map or a document, uh, that, that we can do that with the helmet. Right. And it's also got two visors on it. So a dark visor for when it's too bright outside and a clear visor in case we want to put some protection over our eyes all right, do you mind if I put one of these on? Sure, give it a go. So just unclip that. We'll just take the stuff out of it. There you go. And you want to twist it onto your head. If you try and pull it straight down, you will rip it. Take your hat off, maybe. Okay. Sorry, Aussie hat. There you go. Perfect. All right, now how does this work? So that goes under your chin. I'll do it for you. And then we plug this in to the aircraft. So now you can hear all the radios and you can speak to the rest of the crew. Ooh. 
Because I imagine when this thing's on and those blades are going around, it's pretty loud, right? So that's the other thing that the helmet does for you. It's there to protect your hearing. If you flew in this helicopter without hearing protection on, you would go deaf. We've learned about the cyclic and the pedals, and you mentioned this one here. This one's called the collective, right? Collective. So it's called the collective because it moves all of the blades collectively at the same time. Wow. And what it does is, as I pull up on the collective, it, all of the blades generate more force or more lift, and it allows the helicopter to go up and down. So if I want to climb or descend, I use the collective and I basically it's my power pedal. Right. Right. And I pull up, it's like pressing the gas in a car. It makes me go up. Right. Because unlike an aeroplane, you don't need to take off along a runway. You can go straight up. We can go straight up, absolutely. Uh, um, although for a variety of reasons we don't always do that. Right. Sometimes we do take off a little bit more like an aeroplane. In fact, we can roll down the runway because we've got wheels. Right. We can roll down the runway and take off like an aeroplane. And we can do that when we're really, really heavy. And maybe we don't have enough power to go straight up, but we do have enough power to take off like an aeroplane. Amazing. What a versatile and incredibly impressive piece of machinery. It is. Now, is there anything else inside you want to show me, or should we go and have a little tour on the outside? Let's go have a look. Let's go. So there's another helicopter over here. Can you tell me what that's happening? It looks like it's having a bath. That's right. So when the aircraft goes flying, we like it to come and uh, when it comes home, we like it to do what's called the bird bath. A bird bath. That's right. Well, it is a bird yeah, and it's absolutely. having a bath. And that helps keep the aircraft nice and clean. It stops it getting rusty. And importantly, because our job is to go and save people's lives, uh, it makes sure the helicopter is always ready to go. Because if it's not rusting, it's, it's available for us to fly. Fantastic. All right, now, can you talk me through some of the parts on this amazing uh, aircraft? What's this here? So this is our tracker searchlight, and it's a high-powered searchlight right. that helps us uh, identify things at night when we're flying okay. around on night vision goggles. So, for instance, if we're trying to identify a hole in the trees safely to somewhere to safely land right. to conduct a rescue, it helps us locate that. Uh, if we are hovering in a canyon uh, on night vision goggles, this gives us enough light to help us do that safely. That's Amazing. the sort of thing we use it for. Very good. Okay, so if we start at the top here, sure. what do we got here? The blades? So we've, so we've got the blades so, uh, all attached to the road ahead. We've got five blades. So the blades are all made out of really, really funky. Five blades? Five blades. Wow. And, it, and you'll find that very, the number of blades the helicopter has does yeah. vary. Some right. of them have two, some of them have three, four, and five. Is so, it five because it's bigger? Uh, not always, but a lot okay. of larger helicopters do tend to have more blades. Right. Right. So this one has five. Uh, they're all made out of carbon and composite materials. Really so hard materials. Crazy expensive. Yes, Each no blade doubt. costs $140,000. Wow. Each that's blade. A so lot you of don't money. want to ding them. No, no, you certainly <laughs> so don't. You don't want to ding them. Watch where you're driving. Right. What else? What else? All right, what, are, what are these things? So these are the steps. The steps. Uh, they help us get in and out of the aircraft. Just like on a, normally getting in and out, they're pretty useful. But we also do rescues where maybe we don't want to winch the crew out, yeah. but the surface isn't stable enough for us to land the aircraft. And what we might do is we do might hover really, really close to the ground, you know, maybe with the wheel just a few centimeters off the ground. Right. And it allows a doctor or a paramedic to scooch out and use the step to get out on the ground and we, whilst we're still hovering. Wow. So that would take some pretty precise flying by the pilot like you yourself. You have to be really careful because you don't like to hurt your mates. You certainly don't. You want to keep them safe. All right. So we've got, what's back here? Okay. So this is the baggage compartment. Not okay. really that exciting, nah, but it does boring. contain critical medical equipment, right? right? Of course. So whilst the space is a bit boring, we have some of the most important bits of life-saving equipment that we carry in the boot. And if needed, the medical team can make use of that while we're moving patients between hospitals. Fantastic. All right, and what do we have back here? What's this bit called? Well, this is the, the tail. tail. I think probably go back a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. One of the most critical bits is the, the engine. So oh, that's where the engines. engine is. That's the engine. On the top. Right, and then you've got an exhaust pipe. And people often don't think of a helicopter as, have, as being a jet, 
but this has two jet engines wow. that power it. And but that's not uncommon in helicopters. These are pretty powerful engines. Now, how and fast can this thing fly? This flies at about 260 kilometers an hour. So a little bit faster than you drive on the roads, right? Just a bit. You know, a, a little, lot. A little. It helps the commute. Yeah, I bet. So that allows you to get to remote places really, really quickly. It does. That's right. Great, great, great. Right, I'm not going to ask any more questions. Why don't you tell me the next most important sure. thing? Sure, okay, so then we've got the tail boom. Uh, what, do, what is the tail boom for? The tail boom allows us to mount a tail rotor at the back of the aircraft. So that, those blades up there are the tail rotor. That's the that's tail, tail rotor. rotor. And the reason that's important is because you've got these five blades all going in one direction. Right. And they've got these two really powerful engines spinning the blades. Right. And what the helicopter wants to do is if you're spinning something one way, it wants to react and spin the opposite way. Right. And what the tail rotor does is it stops the helicopter spinning and responding to all that torque that's going in from the engines through the main rotor. That's absolutely amazing. Now I've got a question for you. Which direction do these blades spin? These blades are all spinning anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. You can tell because you can look at the shape of them and they, intuitively you can look and go, okay, that's well, the it, front. they're going that way. They've Fair got enough. a swept tip and they've got a really, really hard front edge so that they don't get easily damaged if you hit something. Right. Now what's this one called? Okay, so this is called the um, this is called the stabilator, and it just helps keep the aircraft stable in flight. Right. Okay. Very good. Now, which direction do these blades actually? Oh, I bet you can guess. I think they spin that way. That's right. Perfect. So that that's the front. That's right. The front curved. with the swept tip, and then you've got that hard front edge, which again stops it getting damaged easily. Amazing. All right. Well, and everything then is repeated on this side of the of aircraft. Course. Of right. Course. So you've got the second engine. Uh, you've got the baggage compartment. We talked about some of that really critical life-saving medical equipment. Right, so that's, that's a good it. example of it. Cool. Now, where does the petrol or the fuel go? So the fuel tanks, I'll show you. So the fuel tanks sit behind uh, this surface here. Right. And they're, they're, there's a fuel tank on each side, which is connected. And we can put about 1,000 500 litres of fuel into the aircraft. Well, that's a lot. Yeah. How many hours could you fly for on that amount of so fuel? It's about three hours. All right, now what's this thing? That's that's the winch that you mentioned so this before. This is the rescue winch. So you okay. remember from previously from talking to Ben. And so that whole so contraption is where it is. That whole control contraption has a has a, a drum with, co with coiled steel cable on it. And we can lower this over 200 feet. And we, so we can lower the paramedic and the doctor down to critical scenes where perhaps you can't walk to or you can't land a helicopter. Well, if you get sick or injure yourself somewhere which is really remote, this is what allows us to rescue you. So not only can we put the doctor and paramedic in, but then we can put you in a stretcher and we'll rescue you in a stretcher using the winch. Very, very cool. All right, Tim, you've been amazing with your time today. You've My given pleasure. myself and the kids lots of information, but just before we go, if there's some kids out there that love aircraft and particularly helicopters, how do they follow their dream to maybe being in a position like yourself and doing it for a job? Sure. Um, well, first thing, you've got to work really, really hard at school. Absolutely. Okay. So work hard at school, get good results. then. You've got to follow your passion and you've got to go and get a private helicopter pilot's license. Okay. So you can do, you can choose to go through the commercial or the uh, civil scheme and go and get your private pilot's license, your commercial helicopter pilot's license, or another way you can do it is to join the military and they do and pay for that all for you. I join the, the army. So you can join the army or a navy as a helicopter navy. pilot. In fact, most of the guys who are flying the rescue helicopters come from the army and navy because they've got all that experience uh, flying big, uh, helicopters in high pressure environments. So we hire a lot of those guys. Amazing, so you could be in the Army or the Navy and then come and fly a rescue helicopter. Right. What a life that would be. Nothing to complain about. Absolutely, so to do that kids, the most important message that I always share is you gotta stay keen. That's right, you just gotta follow your dreams and stay keen and you'll get there. That's right. All right Tim, thank you so much thank for your you, time mate. today. Cheers. I'm just gonna go and have a bit more of a look at this. Go for and I'll it. let you continue on and, and do your job. Thanks mate.
So there you go kids, how lucky have we been today to visit the Toll Rescue Ambulance Helicopter Service. It's been super fun and how good was Ben and Tim giving us their time to teach us all about what they do in the ambulance helicopters. Hey, what a great job that'd be. Kids, I hope you've loved this episode as much as I have. We'll see you on a brand new episode of Aussie very soon. And until then, stay keen. If you haven't already, make sure you get a great up to help you hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out. Speaking of new and exciting, if there's a video that you'd love to see Aussie do, make sure you send us a message on our socials, on Facebook or Instagram at Aussie for Kids. We'll see you again soon kids, and until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right. Stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend.